Hi folks, I'm back. I'm doing another video and this video asks the question, has God forsaken Israel? I'm going to be largely in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37, starting at verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley and that was full of dry bones. Okay, so here we go. So God takes Ezekiel to this valley that's full of dry bones. And he caused and he caused me to pass among them round about, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley. And lo, they were very dry. So who do these dry bones represent? The nation of Israel. He said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. So at this point in time of Israel's history, they were in Babylonian captivity. They had been driven out of their country in 586 BC. Now that was the southern kingdom that that happened to. Okay, the northern kingdom went into Assyrian captivity in um, 722 BC. And quite frankly, after they went into Assyrian captivity, not, not much was written about those 10 tribes. Now they're mentioned a couple of more times in the Bible, but as to where they were actually scattered to, where they actually went to after they went into captivity. Well, the Bible is pretty silent about that. So these bones here represent those that went into Babylonian captivity. Again, he said to me, prophecy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. So now, now Ezekiel's getting ready to prophesy over these bones and something, you know, something amazing is, is, is going to happen. Verse 6, I will put sinews on you and make flesh grow back on you, cover you with skin and put breath in you that you may come alive and, I, and you will know that I am the Lord. 7, so I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold a rattling and the bones came together, bone to bone. So now we have the nation coming back together through through these bones you know um so i prophesied as i was commanded and i prophesied and there was a noise and a and behold a rattling and the bones came together bone to bone and i looked and behold sinews were on them and flesh grew and the and the skin covered them but there was no breath in them then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come forth, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may come to life. So as historical events, as historical events took place, you know, the, as these bones started to come back together and make a body, a lot of this is historical events that took place in Israel's history. Um, first there was a rattling, and then the bones started to come together, and other things 
started to happen. And before you knew it, there was a nation once again. All right. So I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they came to life and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. 11, then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried up and our hope is perished. We are completely cut off. Well, yeah, a lot of people, you know, when, um, when, uh, you know, when they were in captivity, this is how they felt. Oh man, where's God? You know, we're here in this strange land and a lot of them did lose hope. So this is why this is being said, you know, they've just given up. Oh, God's given up on us. This is where we're going to remain. You know, he's never going to bring us back to Israel. But they were wrong, you know. God did bring them back 70 years later. And the um, and you can read about those exploits in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. Now, the nation of Israel... The Jews lost their nation once again in 70 AD when the Romans came through and kicked them all out, killed a million people, and whoever didn't flee to the four corners of the earth or whoever, or, or whoever wasn't killed, were ta they were taken as captives back to Rome. Now this captivity or the diaspora, that's what it's really called. The diaspora lasted almost 2,000 years. So this prophecy of the dry bones can be applied to both times that Israel was exiled from their country and brought back. They were exiled once and they were brought back so the bones came together, the sinew came on the bones, life came into these, these dead bodies by God, by bringing the nation back to life. So that was the first time, and then he again brought the nation back to life after their almost 2,000 year diaspora. Therefore prophecy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves. My people and I will bring you, wait a minute, my people and I will bring you into the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves and caused you to come up out of your graves, my people. And I will put my spirit within you and you will come to life and I will place you in your own land and then you will know that I am the Lord have spoken and done it, declares the Lord. So so this obviously, this obviously disproves, debunks replacement theology God never forsook the Jews even when they were in Babylonian captivity or when they were in their diaspora God never forsook these people there are numerous prophecies in the Old Testament that repeat over and over and over again that God is going to bring his people back to their land and make them into a great nation. And one day Messiah is going to come to this nation and rule and reign over the nation of Israel and the entire world. I mean, there's at least 1,550 prophecies in the Old Testament that talk about Israel's 
regathering, not only from Babylonian captivity, but from their diaspora. Okay, if God has truly forsaken these people, then he would be breaking his own blood covenant that he made with Abraham in Genesis chapter 15. And I have to ask you, uh, if God has truly forsaken these people, why is there a nation of Israel today? Why have they been around since May 15, 1948? That's strange. If God has truly forsaken these people, then why, why, why is Israel even there? So the simple truth is, folks, is God has never forsaken Israel. Yes, he's cast them out of their country um, twice, just like he said he would. One of those places is Deuteronomy chapter 28. That's one of those favorite places that replacement theologists like to go to and they take scripture and twist it out of context and say, see, 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 God has forsaken Israel. Well, it never says that. It never says once in the book of Deuteronomy 28 that God has forsaken Israel. Never. It never says that. It just simply says, he would chastise them by driving them out of their country. But if you go two chapters over, Deuteronomy 30, it says that he will bring them back. But people don't read that. You know, they just conveniently skip over that and all the other verses that talk about how God will bring his people back, you know, um, to reestablish their nation and that he has not forsaken them and replaced them with something else or the church or whatever it is you think he's replaced them with. It just simply is not the truth. And people that preach replacement theology, they need to stop preaching. Because hmm? they're preaching the devil's message. So they need to stop preaching, step down from behind their pulpits and call it quits and stop thinking about the money. You know, if, 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 if that's all you're thinking about when you stand up there week after week after week, preaching your lies from the devil, then you should not be preaching at all. So again, God has not forsaken the nation of Israel, yes, he's chastised them. Yes, he threw them out of their country twice, but he brought them back twice. Uh, Isaiah 11, 11 says that this would happen. Also, Isaiah 66, 8 says that God would form a nation in a single day. That's exactly what happened on May 15, 1948. Israel was created in a single day, it became a reestablished nation. That has never happened in history before. And also Ezekiel 37 is quite plain that God has never and never will forsake Israel. Okay, and the other 1,550 verses that are in the Old Testament all say the same thing, that God has a wonderful marvelous plan for the nation of Israel during the millennium. Okay, so if Israel's not there, if God has forsaken them, who's going to fulfill all those 1,550 verses? Certainly not the church, because the church didn't exist in the Old Testament. So it's not the church. So it can only apply to one group of people, the Jewish people. So stop taking scripture out of context and saying that God has replaced Israel with something else and taking all those scriptures in the Old Testament and applying them to the church when they don't apply at all. Until next time, my name is Dave Martin. Shalom. Remember, pray for the peace of Jerusalem.